so today I wanted to show you guys a vintage vinyl haul that I recently got. I thought this could be quite a chatty, cozy, snuggly kind of video. So if you have like a cup of tea or some coffee or a warm beverage and you can snuggle up and we can just chat about some records I got, it's gonna be a pretty relaxed, chilled kind of video. But yeah, hopefully that's something that you're into. <laughs> but how are you? So in September, I went to what is apparently London's biggest record fair. It was an indoor record fair in central London and the idea is that a lot of different sellers come from all over the country and they bring in their big boxes of records and you just go in there and you shop. There was an entry fee, so it was £10 to get in. Now, <laughs> I know what you're thinking, why would you pay to shop? And to be honest, that was my first reaction too. But I then realized, and I sort of thought about it, especially because it was a rainy day, a lot of people would have gone into the record fair just to shelter for a bit. And in a weird way, paying to shop means that everyone who's in there is a serious buyer. Everyone is going from seller to seller and looking seriously to buy. Because that's one of the things I think can be a little bit annoying about record fairs sometimes the indie label market is fantastic like i love it but one of my pet peeves about the indie label market is it's combined with a beer market so you get a lot of people just kind of standing there with their glass of beer in front of the record you want to look at so you have to be like please please i really want to buy these <laughs> But I don't know, I mean, I think it's also great to like just browse records and I completely understand that, but going for this record fair, I had a budget, I had an idea that I wanted to look for some cool stuff and I decided to look and it was actually a great shopping experience. I got quite a few records I've been looking for for a while. I got some things I didn't realize I could get and yeah, I'm just gonna show you guys them. As always, we're gonna go in size order because I'm funny that way. So we're starting off with a single from one of my favorite artists, Blondie. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll know that I'm a pretty big Blondie fan. I used to listen to her greatest hits CD every single day when I got home from school, just on repeat, every single day. I was that kid. So you can imagine what I'm like with the vinyl now. So the A side of this is Sunday Girl, and then it's backed with I Know But I Don't Know. And then there's just that photo of Debbie, Harry and the boys. And then these are the previous albums. I've got all of these albums. So I feel like a good collector now. <laughs> the next single that I got is David Bowie, China Girl, backed with Shake It. I love David Bowie. I really do. And Let's Dance is one of my favorite Bowie albums. Obviously at the moment it's tying with Black Star, but Let's Dance is still, I don't know, I really enjoy it. If you've seen my previous vintage vinyl haul videos, you'll know that I got Let's Dance in one of my very first hauls. I was so excited about that. And then this is obviously China Girl. I like getting the singles from albums because sometimes there is something really specific. And I also love how the artwork from the singles usually ties in with the album artwork. I don't know, that's just something that I find very aesthetically pleasing. It's cool because it also has on the back information about the Sirius Moonlight tour of 83. So coming to London Wembley Arena on June 2nd, June 3rd and June 4th. And also the Milton Keynes Bowl. The next singles that I got are both from Kate Bush. The first one is This Woman's Work. I love This Woman's Work. I mean, I love Kate Bush anyway, and I love This Woman's Work, but the song This Woman's Work is so beautiful. It's about femininity, it's about grief, I'm pretty sure it's about childbirth and losing a child. I'm not 100% sure, but that's how I've always interpreted it. And so for me, it always just makes me really sad to hear it. Kate Bush is such an interesting artist and I think she's inspired so many other artists, particularly in having that artistic female perspective and going in and just doing a bunch of crazy stuff and just seeing what sticks and making everyone be like, oh, she's weird, what's she doing? And then a few years later, everyone's copying it. On the back is Be Kind To My Mistakes. And they're both produced by Kate Bush. The other Kate Bush single that I got is something that I didn't even know existed. So this is a Kate Bush Christmas song called December Will Be Magic Again. I don't know why it was created. I think it was 1980 it was created. It's backed with warm and soothing. I just had to get it. Like the artwork is intriguing. There's a lion as Santa Claus because sure. Two lovely little reindeer with baubles in their antlers because why not? If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I am doing something called Instamass. 
which is like the Instagram version of Vlogmas because I cannot do a video every day right now but I was like I can do a picture. So this is featured in my Instamess as well as some previous records and like some stuff that I'm up to this Christmas. So if you want to see this and a few of my other Christmas records and Christmas activities then follow me on Instagram. I'm at Katie Wawa. The next single that I got is quite a classic. I came across like this box of singles and it was all things that I loved and I was like what what am I doing? But this is Anarchy in the UK by the Sex Pistols. It's Anarchy in the UK backed with I Wanna Be Me and as you can see it's got that whole very DIY aesthetic. It looks like photocopied and stuff being ripped and like it's as if someone's just photocopied something with a paper clip through it. It's got like the numbers on it and all looks like handwritten and I think sometimes with vinyl in particular people forget how big punk music was on vinyl. Like I feel like a lot of people who collect records at the moment are sort of from the prog rock generation which you know do you do you but for me I've always preferred punk and like new wave and that is more about like tearing stuff up and so like to find this and then I think it's from 1977 because obviously it's a secondhand record I just like to think someone probably owned this and was a punk I hope maybe they were just trying to be cool it just reminds you that punk music was such a huge thing on vinyl yeah I don't know does that make sense the next single I got is quite a classic. I found this from a stall that had just loads of seven inches from all different genres all lined up like loads of cool like really old ones, a lot of interesting stuff like number one singles from 1963, 1964, 1965. Like I really loved how it was laid out and this is Nancy Sinatra, These Boots Are Made For Walking. What a track. And if you've seen the new Gilmore Girls um, A Year In The Life on Netflix then you'll know that this song was used to great effect during that. It's backed with The City Never Sleeps at Night, which was written by Lee Hazelwood, as was These Boots Are Made For Walking. Nancy Sinatra's style is so cool, and I feel like she's one of those artists who when you listen to her, you're just immediately transported back, and you just feel so immersed in a specific time. So I was really pleased to find this, and I have been spinning it quite a bit. The next single that I got is also one of these that didn't come with the original sleeve. I saw it and I had to get it. This was definitely an impulse buy because before I went to the fair I had been watching Safety Tess's video on misleading musicians. It's this great video where she goes through all these different bands that people think are one type of music from the way that they appear but then when you actually listen to their music and analyze it you realize that they're a completely different kind of band and people just have this impression of them that's wrong. I'll link it in the comments below because it's a great video but she mentions at one point Leader of the Pack by the Shangri-Las and then I went out the next day and literally saw the seven inch record so I was like I have to get this it's perfect it's a sign it's a great little single and it is backed with Remember Walking in the Sand just a classic 60s girl band there basically which you know I'm always into. The next couple of singles that I got were partly inspired I say inspired like buying is somehow creative but whatever. This year I read Creation Stories by Alan McGee and he is the guy who was behind Creation Records so he was involved in Jesus and Mary Chain, Primal Scream, he managed I think Oasis for ages, um, The Libertines. He's just one of those people who has an incredible ear for what's gonna be next and he was really passionate about it and he had this indie label when indie music really worked in the UK. It's a fascinating memoir and it's all like all these little behind the scenes bits. So because I was reading that I have just gotten really into that period of music. So I already loved the Jesus and Mary chain but I found this single which is Never Understand backed with Suck and it's back from when Bobby Gillespie was still doing drums. But it was just really funny for me as well because I'd been reading about what the Reed brothers were actually like and like what Bobby Gillespie was actually like and Douglas Hart just like chilled out. And obviously it's all from Alan McGee's perspective but I love reading about behind the scenes, how people behaved and then like what they created. So I already knew all the stories behind this single but to find this and be like hmm this is somebody who bought this at the time and now I own it. It's really cool. So related to that I also found <gasps> 
this. Primal Scream, loaded, backed with I'm losing more than I'll ever have. And there's like a whole chapter related to this single and how important this was in changing the indie music scene in the UK. And so when I found it, I was like a little bit overwhelmed but I was so happy. It just feels like a piece of history, part of this whole change, and oh, it's so interesting to listen to you and like hear that moment when tastes start to change and experimentation. And it's also really interesting to compare it with the Chaosmosis album, which recently came out, like in terms of the artwork and in terms of how Bobby Gillespie is presenting himself. I find it fascinating. The next three singles I got were in a deal where I think it was like three for 10 pounds or something, but I decided to go for a theme with it because this stall had a lot of Madonna. Yeah. So the first one I got was Crazy For You by Madonna and this apparently was from the soundtrack for Vision Quest, that classic movie. <laughs> I'm sure it's a great film, I just, I haven't seen it and it's just so 80s from the poster on the back here. I just love it's like classic early Madonna styling, little one for the collection. The next single I got was also Madonna and it's Papa Don't Preach backed with Ain't No Big Deal. It's from True Blue. Papa Don't Preach, such a great song. And this as well was like slight evolution, slightly different style for Madonna. I just think it looks really cool. Again, another one for the Madonna collection. I like how the cover art is like echoing the True Blue cover art and it's like that pared down and more raw and natural. And then the final Madonna single that I got, which is part of that deal, Material Girl. This is from the album Like a Virgin. Can you fault that cover art? Cause I can't. Material Girl is backed with Pretender on the B side, which I didn't realize was produced by Niall Rogers. What a legend. I know that I've previously spoken about doing a Madonna collection. I think you guys are still up for that, right? So the next two records that I got are both 7-inch EPs. If you've seen my most recent vintage vinyl haul, which was all Yeah Yeah Girls music, then you'll know that I'm a little bit obsessed with a few French 60s pop artists. And I cannot quite explain again how incredibly excited I was when I saw these EPs, because I was just going through and I always have a look at the French stuff just in case, and I never expect to find stuff. And then I found these. Okay, all right, are you ready? Seriously, are you ready? Because I'm like a bit too excited about this. First one is Francois Hardy. So this is Pourtant Tu Même, which means I still love him. I don't think that's what it means. That's not the literal. I think it's although, although you love me, isn't it? However you love me, Pourtant. I don't know, but it's translated into English as I still love him. So we'll take that. And this is an original Disque Vogue, which was the original record company for Francoise Hardy. And then on the back, it's got some of her other releases. So I think I've got a couple of these. I haven't got the EP en anglais, but I would like it. <laughs> If you ever see it, let me know. But yeah, I love Françoise Hardy. I think that she's just such an incredible artist. Her style is so iconic and she just makes you happy to listen to her and like you kind of feel soulful and cool. And she's singing about so many interesting subjects and bringing agency to young women. There's so many cool things about it. And she also wrote a lot of her own songs, which is kind of rare from that period. The other EP that I got is another Françoise Hardy and this is C'est Fab. But this I believe is from the British record company Pi Records or PYE. I should probably do a Francoise Hardy collection as well because I have quite a few of her records. I think I have pretty much all of these in other formats like on the albums or on other albums but I really love them. This is so good and I was so pleased when I found this as well. Like the sight of Francoise's eyes looking at me was so exciting. I suppose that's one of the reasons that it is good to go to these massive record fairs because there are so many sellers and there's such a range of interests and collections that you can almost guarantee you'll find a, like at least one record that you're interested in. And I have to say like these ones by no means like the majority of the records. There were a lot of records that were like Beatles pressings and Stones and like a lot of things you would expect. But if you are interested in quite specific kinds of music 
or if you already have like all the main ones or whatever then I think they're quite fun to go to because you can find the missing pieces of your collections and you can like talk to people there who might know where you can find what you want and stuff. Anyway um, I'm gonna finish off with the LPs that I got. I got three LPs and the first one I <sighs> Again, this is one I saw and I was just so excited to see it. I didn't know it existed, if that makes sense. Like I knew it existed, but I didn't know that I could actually physically get my hands on it. This is Peggy Lee, is that all there is? So Peggy Lee, if you've heard of her, you have. If you haven't, you haven't. Is that all there is? Is probably one of her most famous singles. She's a, quite a classic 60s artist. And apparently the character of Miss Piggy in The Muppets is meant to be based on her in terms of being like quite a glamorous diva. That was Peggy Lee's persona. And Is That All There Is is one of my favorite songs. I can't really explain why. I just really love that song. I'd gone to see the film Suicide Squad over the summer. And if you've seen that film, you'll know that the whole soundtrack is like a massive clusterfuck of karaoke and like things that don't quite fit. And I just wanted to go in there and like pick new songs. So that's kind of what I did. I created a Spotify playlist for like as if they'd included Poison Ivy in there because she's one of the coolest members of the Suicide Squad and they just forgot her. But I did that and Is That All There Is was one of the songs I picked for her because you know, it kind of fits her character. So because I'm a massive nerd, basically, I'd been obsessing about this song for the past month and then I saw the whole album and this artwork is literally the same artwork as features on the Spotify version. So I saw it and I saw her face and I was like, this is another sign. This is another sign, definitely. So yeah, I got this and I'm very happy with it. And a lot of her music follows those same kinds of styles, same kinds of themes, so to have the whole record there to listen through is like pretty fun. The next record that I got, another LP, and this is Heroes. I have this thing about David Bowie where I really want to collect each of his albums individually. I want to find them or source them or just have a story behind each of his albums that I own. So this album is not an original pressing. Come on, it's Heroes. Like, who's gonna, who's gonna be selling that to me? But it is a coloured vinyl pressing, so it's on red vinyl. It's in mint condition, it's beautiful, and it was cheaper than it would have been to buy new. I think that's one of the things that people forget about buying secondhand records. Sometimes things are perfect condition, but they're just a lot cheaper because someone has owned them for a little bit but they've taken really good care of them and it's going to be cheaper than buying a completely new pressing. Obviously there are some secondhand records which are like first pressings and people are very precious about them and they're very expensive but to be honest like you can also get some really cheap secondhand stuff which is in really good nick and like you just you just look for it basically. Here is Again, it's like one of those albums where it's just perfect. And if you've heard the story behind the recording of the song Heroes, oh, it's so amazing. It's like the wall of sound thing and there's this thing where like each mic was cutting out and like I want to find what it was that they did but like I think I should set you a challenge. If you don't know the story behind how Heroes was recorded then please go look it up because it's really cool and it'll like make you geek out over music again. It's just really cool. The final record that I got is also an LP. I just had such a good shopping experience. This is one I had been wanting for ages and I didn't want to buy it new even though I could and I didn't want to pay too much for it because I just knew I could find it and one day I would find it and I would buy it and it would be perfect and I wanted this album so badly and I loved this album so much but I didn't I just had all those factors in my head that I was like I need to fulfill these it is Fleetwood Mac rumors I know it's perfect everything is perfect everything is right with the world forget what's going on with politics and all of that ridiculous rubbish because I have rumors now like what <laughs> what what is going on pretty much a perfect album like of all the kind of albums that exist, it, it's one of those ones where you're like, every track is great. What are my favourites? I love Dreams, definitely. I love Songbird, Go Your Own Way, I Don't Wanna Know, Chain, The Chain. Oh, I love The Chain. So I found that and I got it and it was like the perfect combination of factors. Oh, so happy with that. So that's everything that I got from the record fair. I hope you enjoyed this little haul video. I know it's like a bit random this version of it and it's 
if we don't really know what's going on. If you like this kind of video, it's very easy for me to film them. <laughs> I just wanted to show you guys this stuff with like minimum fuss just to chill out and, and show. If you've posted any haul videos yourselves or any videos in general, I'm really in the mood to watch some of your guys' stuff. I don't know why, but apparently in the comments when you post a link, it like automatically thinks that it's a spam message. So you can either post a link to your video in the comments and I'll just go through and manually approve it. Or if you want to tweet it at me, I'm just really in a mood to watch like a lot of vinyl hauls for like inspiration and stuff, I guess. <laughs> So if you have uploaded any or like uploaded some ages ago, then let me know. I want to watch some. I'm trying to find new stuff to watch on YouTube at the moment, so recommendations are highly appreciated. If you enjoyed this video, then you can always go and leave a little like. It helps me a lot, not only to know what kinds of content people enjoy watching, but also I do find it really motivating and inspirational to see people like reacting to and liking stuff that I'm making. Like it makes me want to make more. I don't know if that sounds like really um, silly to say. I don't know. But seeing that people like the stuff I'm making feels like it's worth making. I don't know. <laughs> and if you have just stumbled across this video and you're not already subscribed to me, can I just suggest that you click subscribe. I'm not gonna beg, I'm not gonna plead, but I'm gonna kindly suggest that you come and join us here because it's a lot of fun. And if you are already subscribed, I just wanna say thank you. You're the people I'm talking to. Like, I don't know if you know this, but when I'm making a video, I'm talking to you. Like, I'm talking to a camera right now, but I can see you. And I can see like your little like avatars and stuff and I can see like those of you who I know also make videos like I see you. Tell me if I'm getting too weird on you. And if you have any questions about any of these records or recommendations or um, comments or general reviews of like any of these or suggestions, I would love to chat with you down in the comments. So if you just post a little comment down there, I will try to reply to them as soon as possible. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you have a lovely day slash evening. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!